<clears throat> Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word, the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest, which means it is made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, any gift of financial, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 the chains of financial freedom. You know what I'm saying? Them things just, I see the shackles falling off. You know what I'm saying? Listen, that boy give you a, a new job. You know what I'm saying? New car. You walk into the walk into the lottery. You meet you a new, new uh soulmate. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter. Anything that you get can and will be used against you in the day of judgment. If you do not repent with that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. You know what I mean? Where we at? Let's just jump right back into it. This is uh, 2 Kings. We got a lot to cover. You know what I'm saying? I ain't wasting no time today. 2 Kings chapter 2. I got two weeks worth of word to give y'all. You know what I'm saying? We got to catch this thing up. We behind schedule now. Right? It's 2 Kings chapter. We didn't took two weeks off, right? Yeah. Because I took this week, this last week we took off. We was here the week before that, but didn't we take off the week before that? No? We just did that in my mind? I think it's last time I looked at it, it says the 15th, right? Because the week before Daniel read. Oh, yeah, so we took, yeah, last week, yeah. Oh, okay. You're right. Last well, week. in my mind, we took off, I don't know, maybe if my guilty conscience, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, in my mind, week. I ain't gonna lie, though, that little, you know what I'm saying, that little, you know what I'm saying, that Sabbath night off, y'all, you know what I'm saying, that thing was all right. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie to y'all, that thing was all right. You know what I mean? That thing was all right. But listen, um, uh, let's get right back to it. This is uh, 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 18. <clears throat> Second Kings chapter five verse eighteen. Let's get to it. What's the book say? You know, verse eighteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> In this thing the Lord pardoned thy servant, that when my master go goeth into the house of Rimmon, I mean Ramon, to worship there, and he leaneth on my hand. Remember, he leaneth on his hand. Who is this talking? Who remember who this is talking? Uh, Naaman. Right? This Naaman talking. Y'all remember Naaman? Y'all forgot about Naaman? Naaman had the darn leprosy. Hmm? No, not him. You know what I'm saying? No, Naaman had the darn leprosy. He had to, you know what I'm saying? He wanted to get it. What happened? You remember Naaman? Uh, That's right. Seven times. Right? That's a good job. Boy, you remember this stuff. You're going to be all right. You pay attention. You live your right life right. You're going to be all right, man. It's your saving grace here. You're going to be all right. You, you know what I'm saying? Most high God put it on your mind and remember the word. That's a special thing. You don't take that lightly. Yeah. That's a special thing. Not everybody. You see everybody else in this room? Everybody else just sitting here. Don't remember just sitting there picking their darn nose. Don't remember a darn thing. Just read it. But you, it's two weeks ago you remembered it. Like that. Quick, too. You know what I'm saying? That's a special thing. You honor that. You thank God for that. That's a good thing he put it on your mind to remember this. It's a good thing to be able to retain the word. Retain a lot of stuff is good, too. But to retain the word, that stuff saves your soul. You understand that? That's important. Listen, name him. He was like, listen, I got leprosy. <clears throat> the king of his nation was like, who can help with leprosy? He heard a rumor. Oh, they could do that down in Israel. There's a prophet down there. He sent the letter to the Israelite king. The king of Israel was like, oh, this man just trying to pick a fight with me. He know I can't heal no darn leprosy. Then all of a sudden, Elisha was like, man, go ahead and send them to me. I can help him out with that. Send them to me. So he sent a message to Naaman. He told Naaman, go down to the Jordan River. Now the Jordan River, that, you know what I'm saying, 
to name it, the Jordan River is like Lake Mead. Like, I ain't swimming in that nasty river, you know what I'm saying? So he told him, go to the Jordan River, dip dip a couple times. Name it looking like, don't he know if, if you're going to send me to a river, at least send me to a nice one. Yeah. That's how Name was looking at it. Then his man told him, he was like, listen, you tripping about that. If he told you to do some wild, crazy stuff, wouldn't you have done it? What? Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't last or the last time he came. But yeah, he split the water in half too. Yeah, but he looking like what you got? That's right. You know what I'm saying? You gonna you know what I'm saying that and that same thing. Name it was like, he was yeah. like yeah, I would. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that. So anyway, Name went to the Jordan. He eventually did it. He, he came up. His skin soft like a baby. You know what I'm saying? That's what the that was the book said. He had new skin like a baby, right? So after that, he is like great. So now this is the after effect. He's praising God and he's telling them, man, your God, Elisha, your God, the most high God, Yahuwah, that's the only true God. And I know that now. So he's now he's letting them know, listen, if I go into Dogan's place, who is another God, right? If I go over there and I'm in that temple, I'm not worshiping another God. I'm just here with the king. That's what he's trying to let them know. Let's see what happened. Keep going. <clears throat> So in this thing, the Lord pardon thy servant, that when my master goeth into the house of Ramon to worship there, and, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself into the house of Ramon, when I bow down myself into the house of Ramon, the Lord pardon thy servant in this thing. That's right. <clears throat> and he said unto him, go in peace. So he departed from him a little way, but Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, behold, my master have spared Naaman this the Syrian, and not receiving at his hands that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will re I will run after him <clears throat> and take somewhat of him. So Gezi followed after Naaman, and Naaman saw him running after him. He, li he, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well. My master have sent me, saying, Behold, even now where be become to me from Mount Ephraim, Ephraim, two young men of the sons of the prophets, give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two chains of garment. Right. So understand what's happening. It's a shakedown. Yeah. Right. So now Elisha sent a message to Naaman. Naaman did it. Naaman came to go see Elisha. He looked like, man, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate this. I ain't going to serve no other guys. Naaman went on his way. Then Gazi was looking like... <laughs> That boy ain't even give like he brought gifts and he never gave them to you because you never asked for them. You're like, I'm gonna chase after him and I'm gonna ask for these gifts. So then he chased after him. And Naaman looking back, he saw him chasing. He's like, Is it good? You all right? <laughs> so Naaman got off, like, what's what's going on? He's like, listen, listen, listen. Look, your servants, the prophets, go ahead and give us, you know what I'm saying? A couple shekels of silver. You know what I'm talking about? Like, go ahead, you know what I'm saying? What you got? You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and hook us up. Yeah. Now in name and mine. Oh, yeah, no problem, because look at what your master just did for me. Go take this back to him. He think he giving it to Alicia. Yeah. But God, you looking at it like, yeah, no, I'm going to take it to him. I'm going to take it to him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he's still in it. Yep. So let's see what happens. <clears throat> and Naaman said, be content. Take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver into, into, into two bags. With two chains of garments and laid them upon two of his servants, mm -hmm. and they bare them before him. Mm -hmm. And when he came to the tower, he took them for their hand and bestowed them into the house. Mm -hmm. And he let them go, let the men go, and they departed. Mm -hmm. But but he went in and stood before his master. And Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no with him. And he said unto him. Went not my, my heart with thee? All right. He said, didn't my heart go with you? <laughs> so you got to understand when we talking about the Bible, when the Bible mentioned the heart, it's not talking like when we talk about the heart, what we usually talk about? Like my heart feels for you. What, what, is, that, what is that usually talk about? Like love, mm -hmm. right? What else could we be talking about with, with your heart? Emotion, right? It's like, oh, I felt it in my heart. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's usually emotion. Like I love you from my heart. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you made my heart jump. You know what I'm saying? Those type of things. We talking about oh, you made me happy, right? You made me very sad. You broke my heart. You made me sad, right? When we talk about the heart, it's usually talking about emotion. When the book is talking about the heart, it's talking about thoughts. Yeah. Right? 
They're talking about thoughts. So it's like the mind, right? So when you read the heart in the in the Bible, it's like saying the mind, mm -hmm. right? So he's saying, didn't my mind go with you? In other words, I know where you was yeah. at. <laughs> I know where you was at. I know what you did. So yep. guys, he went out, got him, you know what I'm saying? You know how the kids say, got the bag? He literally got a bag of silver. You know what I'm saying? That boy got the bag. You know what I'm saying? He did. That what the book say. He got the bag. Right? So he got it. And then he ran back with it. And then Elisha was like, yo, yo, where you? You know what Where you coming from? God was like, nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Nowhere. No, I'm just about, you know what I'm saying? He was like, don't you know that my mind went with you? I know where you was at, boy. Let's see what happened next. <clears throat> when a man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, so yeah, like you said, uh, uh, uh I'll just go over again. So, and he said unto him, went not my heart with thee? Mm -hmm. When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? Mm-hmm. Is it, it, is it a time to receive money and to receive garments mm -hmm. and olive yards mm -hmm. and vineyards mm -hmm. and sheep mm -hmm. and oxen and men servants mm -hmm. and maid servants? The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his, his presence a leper as white as snow. Right. So now he said it's going to cleave unto him and his seed forever. That means that he always going to have a lineage of people who got leprosy. So not only did he get leprosy, but he always going to have at least a child that's going to have leprosy and they're going to pass that leprosy down. Right. So it's going to stay in his lineage. Right. May not mean that every one of his kids got leprosy, but it's always going to be in his lineage. Some leprosy forever is what the book say. Mm. Right. So that's what happened. Right. Keep going. You can't play the mm. prophets like that. <laughs> and the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let mm -hmm. us go, we pray thee unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. Mm -hmm. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he, oh. answered, and he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a, felling a beam, mm -hmm. The axe head fell into the water mm -hmm. and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, where fell it? And he, and he shooed him to place. All right. So now a man chopping down wood. Bow. Bow. You know, how you got wood. You usually got like a wooden handle, right? You got like an axe. It is like a wooden handle. And at the top of it, what is it? It's like a metal blade, right? And it's connected to the wooden handle. What if you going crazy on that thing? Like, yak it, doing tricks with it. Yak it, yak it, yak it, yak it, yak it, yak it. You know what I'm saying? Just going crazy with it. What might happen to the top, to that metal piece? Break off. It might break off, right? So you, he, he chopping away. Yak it, yak it, yak it. And then all of a sudden, the top piece fly off and it land into the water, right? And so he is like... We trying to chop down wood. We got this whole little plan. We trying to get everything situated. Master, it fell into the water. So Alicia came over like, okay, where it went? Where'd you see it go? He's like right over there. He pointed to it. Watch what happened. And he cut down a stick and cast it in the in thither. <clears throat> right? So then Alicia cut down a stick, right? Not a, not a big log, but just a stick. And then he cast it and he threw it into the water. Right, right where the, uh, the the head of the axe was. Watch this. And the iron did swim. Right. Then after that, when he threw the wood in the water, then the iron came up and started swimming, the book says. So it was floating, and it just started coming to him. Right. Keep going. Watch this. Therefore, therefore said he, take it up to, the, to thee, and he put out his hand and took it. Right. That's what happened. So it started swimming to him. He put out his hand. He said, take it up to you. In other words, grab it. He grabbed it. And he got it. So that was a miracle, another miracle that happened. These are all the things that the book is kind of documenting to show you Elisha was a bad man. The Most High God let Elisha do a lot of stuff, right? Keep going. Then the king of Syria, <clears throat> king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such and place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there and therefore not himself, not once nor twice. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Therefore, the heart of the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for his for this thing. Mm -hmm. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye now, will you not shew me which of us, which of us is from the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, tell us thee, the king of Israel, the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Mm -hmm. And he said, In other words, the stuff that you say privately in your room, Elisha, Elisha can tell you. Like Elisha, what he's trying to say is Elisha so good yeah. that you can say something secretly in your room and he can tell you what you said. You know what I'm saying? He's just basically saying that's the most high God give Elisha all types of knowledge, right? Let's see. Keep going. And he said, go and spy where he is mm -hmm. that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him saying, behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and encompassed the city about. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember this? Y'all remember Elijah, right? Mm -hmm. And you remember you remember when the king of Israel wanted to get Elijah? Yeah. Remember Elijah interrupted his men? He had going up to, uh, I think he had going up to Sidon. Huh? And he ended up saying, that's good. So you remember this stuff good. But yeah, he interrupted him. He was like, yeah, no, nah. you know what I'm saying? Tell your master he's going to die right in that bed. They told the master that he is looking like, describe who did it. And it's like, oh, yeah, he is a hairy man. You know what I'm saying? He had a nice little belt. You know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, wow, that's Elijah. He's like, go ahead and send 50 of them boys over there and go get them. The 50 came. He set them on fire, just like Max said, right? Then another 50 came. What did he do to those, Max? Set, set them boys on fire, too. Then another 50 came. What they do? Set them on fire. Wasn't it like, horses? Uh, yeah, that's right. He went to him. He was like, look. Pray that my life be spared. Uh, the last 50, they got on their knee. They look like, look, we surrender to you just to spare our lives. Right? And after that, they was good. You know what I'm saying? So now we about to see a similar theme. So you have to look at this like this is something that the kings of Israel customarily did. When they want somebody, send 50 of them boys out there, go get them. And it had to be successful every time. Ain't nobody mess with 50 of, 50 of our people in an army. Please, ain't nobody. You better back. You better sit your butt down. You better turn your butt over. Don't, mean, don't act stupid now. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? You see 50 of us, our people, buff, strong, locks hanging down. You know what I'm saying? We come down, we looking like, yo, no, nah, you, we want you. Like, nah, bro. You know what I'm saying? We good. Nah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? What you want to do? You know what I'm saying? My hand behind my back, all right. You know what I'm saying? That was wrong with these police. All these little white police officers, they be scared of stuff. You put a whole bunch of us out there. You see how scared they be? You got women across the street, crossing the street of the other street, trying to get away from us. They already across the street. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just because we powerful people. Yeah. We walking down the street, just looking at it, be like, hmm. I'm telling you, I go. And then imagine a whole bunch of you just got, you got a whole in uniform, walking up, it's 50 of them. Like, yo, yo, you, that's what we want. And then people are like, no, nah, we good. You know what I'm saying? Turn you right on over. So that's, what's well, that's what they're used to happening. Then it was different when they, you said 50 of them, Elijah, burnt them all up. He's like, I don't know where they went. Go ahead and send another 50 because I don't know that. Burnt another one up. I don't know what happened to these 50. Send one more 50. And then them boys came, you know what I'm saying, came back intact but captured. So it's like, okay, that was different. That was just Elijah. Now it's Elisha. He think he can get something different with Elisha. It's a different king, but they think they can get something different with Elisha. So he tried the same tactic. This is the customary tactic. Send 50. You want somebody? Send 50. Let's see. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. Mm -hmm. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Mm -hmm. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they, be, they that be with them. Remember, that's exactly what Elijah said, right? Keep going. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. Mm -hmm. and, the Lord, and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire mm -hmm. round about Elisha. Mm -hmm. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. Mm -hmm. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Mm -hmm. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the to the man whom ye seek. Mm -hmm. But he but he led them to Samaria, and it came to pass when they were coming to Samaria 
And Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. Mm -hmm. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. Mm -hmm. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? Mm -hmm. Shall I smite them? And he answered, thou shalt not smite them. Wouldst thou smite those whom thou, thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Mm -hmm. Set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink. And go there and go to their master. Uh huh. And he prepared a great provision for them. And when he when they had eaten and drunk, he Sit said down. he said them he sent them away, and they went to their master. Uh huh. So the bands of of Syria came no more into the, the land of Israel. Mm hmm. And it came to pass after this, Ben Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. Mm hmm. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it. And until all and donkey head was, was sold for four score pieces of silver and a fourth part of the cab of dove's um, dung. All right. So you got to understand what's happening. They surrounded the uh, they surrounded the city and they prevented anything from going in or out of the city. So by doing that, it made it so there was scarcity. In other words, it made it so it wasn't a lot of food. So what happens, with, who knows about supply and demand? None of y'all know about supply and demand, huh? That's all right. That's good. Now we've got to learn a little something. So somebody throw me a ball. Just one person. Just, oh, goodness gracious. Good. Goodness gracious. Okay. This is a dodgeball. Okay. Everybody got a ball except for Max and Matt and I, Matt and I right? Everybody got a ball. Huh? So somebody needs a ball. Two people need a ball. And there's only one ball left. I got a ball. Let's say you absolutely need this ball. Perfect. Just want it so bad. Okay. Max, what you willing to do for this ball? How much money you willing to spend? A hundred dollars. How much money you willing to spend? A thousand dollars. Okay, he's gonna spend a thousand. You gonna beat it? Maybe. Two thousand dollars. How much you gonna spend? Oh, fifty thousand dollars. So you see, I just keep going up because there's only one ball, right? There's only one ball left. So because of that, and both of y'all want it, y'all gonna do whatever you can to get this ball instead of the other person getting it because you want it. That's called demand. So when the demand is high, when there's a whole lot of demand. That means the price of the ball goes up, right? This ball. Now, really, this ball ain't worth nothing. It's worth a dollar. But because it's only one of them and it's two people that want it, I'll pay a dollar for it. Well, I'll pay a dollar fifty for it. Well, I'll pay two dollars for it. So guess what I'm going to say? Well, if you're willing to pay twice the price price of what this is worth, then boy, I'm going to sell it to you. But then, well, hold on. If you're going to pay two dollars, I'll pay three dollars for it. So then I'm going to say, all right, the ball costs $3. That's the new price. And the price will keep going up as long as people will keep wanting to pay a higher price, right? I'll just keep changing the sticker on it. Nope, it's $3 now. Nope, it's $4 now. It's $6 now. It's $18 now, however much it costs. It's $1,000, whatever it is. I'll put that as the price, right? So that's called supply and demand. Now, we switch it around. If I say, I want this ball, I'm going to say this ball is worth a dollar, right? But I say, this ball is a thousand dollars because somebody will pay a thousand dollars. But then tomorrow, Daniel come up and he say, "I got seventeen balls, all of them at one dollar." How many people gonna buy my thousand dollar ball? No, everybody gonna go to to, to Daniel ball because he got more balls and his is cheaper. He only has seventeen balls and you only have one. That's all right. His is cheaper though. Uh, somebody go downstairs and uh go get the door for me. So it's one, so it's so it's one dollar a piece. His is one dollar a piece. So now if two people need a ball, and he got seventeen balls, and his is cheaper, then two people just gonna buy his cheaper balls. So guess what I gotta do to my ball? I gotta lower the price. If I want to sell my ball, I'm not gonna be able to sell it for a thousand dollars no more because y'all all buying the ball for one dollar. So now there's supply. $2. Right? Because there's supply, now there's less demand. 
So the more you have of something, the less people want it. The less you have of something, the more people want it. That's supply and demand. So what's happening here is you in you in um you in the city. The city is surrounded by the Syrians. The Syrians cut everything off. They make it so that you can't get no supply in. So guess what happens? It's a high demand. Right? So it's, it's the demand is so high that usually wouldn't nobody do nothing with a donkey's head. We don't even eat donkey. But the, 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 the demand gets so high that the head of a donkey is worth, what is it, four score? What is it, four score? Uh, head of a donkey sold for four score, yep. That's 80 pieces of, sh of silver. 80 pieces of silver is a donkey's head. It ain't really worth that. But because there's no supply getting in, I can't get no food in. I can't get no other animals in. I can't leave out to go hunt. Now, a donkey's head is worth so much money. Right? What you got? Uh, silver is money. Yeah, silver back then was money. You would trade like gold and silver. That's how, you know what I'm saying? That's how, that was, that was uh, money. Right? Our money, when you look at a dollar, the way that that dollar uh, started is somebody would have gold in the bank, right? So if you had gold in the bank, you would be exchanged a dollar and that dollar represented the gold that you had in the bank. So then when you gave out the dollar, what they were doing really is they were transferring that gold elsewhere, right? But really behind that dollar was gold. Now that's changed. It's kind of like a credit card. What you do, you know what I'm saying? The way, the way dollars used to be is like credit cards are now. You would take money and you hold on, son. You would take money and you would put it inside of the bank. So now you have a credit card that represents the money that you have, or not a credit card, but a debit card rather, that represents the money that you have in the bank. So every time you swipe your, your debit card, it takes away from the money that you have in the bank, right? So that's, that's, that's kind of how it worked. But at that point, they were just trading the silver, right? So he would give out the silver and he'd say, okay, give me the donkey's head. But that represents how much everything cost because there was no demand. I mean, there was no supply and they had the city surrounded and people are starving and they eating and they ain't never ate nothing. And they sitting there hungry and they about to start trying to eat each other. Watch this. And <clears throat> uh, the fourth part of cab of a dove dung for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him saying, help. My Lord, O King. Watch this. And he said, if the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? <laughs> right? So look, the king, he passing by the wall. So it's like, you got to think about it. He got the city. There's a wall. He walking through the wall, just kind of looking at everything. Right? And walking over the wall. What you need? No, we are. We passed that. You just got to listen now. So look, he walking across the wall. He looking around. He trying to figure out what's going on. A lady like, help me. Help me! But every you got you got you got to see it from the king point of view. Yep. Everybody, everybody doing yep, bad. Everybody doing bad. Everybody doing bad. So he's looking at the lady. He's looking like, look, let me tell you something. I'm I'm gonna be completely honest with you. <laughs> if Yahuwah can't help you, yeah. if God can't help you, <laughs> what you think I'm gonna do? Yeah. Watch this. Keep going. <clears throat> out of the barn floor or out of the wine press. Mm-hmm. And the king said unto her, what aileth thee? And she answered, this woman said unto me, give thy son that we may eat him to today. You see how I told you everybody mm -hmm. start trying to eat each other? And we will eat my son tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we borrowed my son and did eat him. Mm -hmm. And I said unto her on the next day, give thy son that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when the, the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes and he passed by upon the wall and the people looked and behold, he had sackcloth with him upon, within upon his flesh. Then he said, God do so and more also to me. If the head of Elisha, the son of Shepat shall stand on him this day. Right. Why does he want the head of Elisha? But Elisha can do what, uh, Elijah's doing so because of the famine. No, right? He want the head of Elisha because it was the king of Syria that sent out the 50. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? 
And then he blinded the 50 mm -hmm. and brought them to the king of Israel. Right? And after that, he said, don't kill them. Take them captive. Then all of a sudden, a little bit later, King of Syria surrounded the whole place. Seized the city. Oh, so yeah. he feeling like, oh, Delicious you ball. set me up. Yeah. He looking at his people. They starting to eat each other. They starting to eat donkey heads. We don't even eat donkey. That's not even food for us. So they trying to, they starting to eat donkey. They starting to eat their own human bodies. Right? He looking like this is a mess. And it's all Alicia's fault. So let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. But Elisha sat in his house, and the elders sat with him, and the king sent a man from before him. But, let me see. Uh, but, but ere the messenger came unto him, he said to elders, See ye how this son of a murderer hath sent to take away mine head. Mm -hmm. Look when a messenger come and shut the door, and hold him fast at the door. Mm hmm is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? And while he yet talked with him, behold, the messenger came down unto him. And he said, Behold, this evil is of the Lord. What should I wait for the Lord any longer? Mm -hmm. And then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Right. So what he's saying is food is going to be cheap again. Right. He said food is going to go back to a regular price. He's saying that's going to happen tomorrow. Right now, everybody's starving. He's saying tomorrow, everything going to go back to regular price. In other words, it's going to be supply again. Right. It's not going to be as much demand. What you got? What about yeah, I got. Well, they didn't use gas the way we use gas. What you got? Oh, that's a darn silly darn question. All right, come on, let's get back to it. Then a, then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God mm -hmm. and said, Behold, if the Lord would make widow, windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes. All right, so he's looking at it like, what? Tomorrow everything going to be back to man, please. Do you think if the Most High God opened up the heavens and made it rain like it was windows in heaven, do you think this could even be possible if that happened? He's like, all right, you're going to see it, right? Watch this. But, um, behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat, eat thereof. Mm -hmm. And there were four leprous men at the entering, <clears throat> at the entering of the gate, mm -hmm. and they said one to another, why sit with we here until we die? Mm -hmm. If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we shall die also. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, come, let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. Mm -hmm. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were came out, came to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Mm -hmm. For the Lord hath made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of the great host. All right. So y'all remember we read about this already a few weeks ago. Right. We read it from a different perspective, but we read about this already from a few weeks ago. So it's the same men that went out to the camp. Remember, they was lepers. They were poor lepers. So they went out there. They went out to the camp of the enemy and everybody had gone because the most High God had scared them all. Right. So keep going. Watch this. They said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel have hired against us the king of the Hittites, or the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to come upon us. Mm -hmm. Wherefore they arose and fled until the twilight and left their tents and their, and their horses and their donkeys, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. Mm -hmm. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into the, to one tent and did eat and drink and carried them silk. Then silver and gold and raiment, raiment and went and hid it. All right. So they out there eating and drinking for themselves. And then they took all the, the, the jewelry and all the, all the goods 
And then the book said they hid it for themselves. Then what happened? Watch this. And came again and entered into another tent and carried this also and went and hid it. Right. So then they went to another tent. Because at first they looking like, let me just get what I can get. Right. But then watch this. What happens next? Then they said one to another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning, like some mis mischief will come upon us. Mm -hmm. Now, theref therefore, come that we may go and tell the king's household. Mm -hmm. So they came and called unto the porter of the city, and they told them, saying, We come to the camp of the Syrians. And behold, there was no man there, neither the voice of man, but horses tied, mm -hmm. and donkeys tied, and the tents as they were. And he called the porters and told it to, to the, king house, the king's house within. And the king arose in the night and said unto the servants, I will now show you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we be hungry. Therefore, are they going out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, when they come out of the city, we shall cast them alive and, and get into the city. And one of, his, one of his servants answered and said, let some take, I pray thee, five of these horses that remain which are left in the city behold they are they are as it as all the multitude of israel that left it left uh, in it behold i say there are even as all multitude of israel of israelites that are consumed and let us send send and see mm -hmm. they took therefore two chariots chariot horses and the king sent after the horse of syria saying go and see and they went after them unto Jordan, and lo, all the way was full of garments and vessels which, of, which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. And the messengers returned and told the king. And the people went out and spoiled the tents of, Syri of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Right, just like Elisha said. So the reason why they was able to do it, not because they grew their own food overnight, but because the Syrians ended up fleeing away and they left all of the food there, right? So when they went out there, it was so much supply that now the demand was not quite there. Everybody had enough and it got to the point where I don't even want no flour. I don't even want nothing else to eat, you know what I'm saying? Because it was so much left over, right? Well, where are we at now? Uh, we in what, uh, chapter seven? Okay, chapter seven, verse what? Uh, where we had, uh, that was the end of 16 right there. Okay, let's keep going. Okay. And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand, who, <clears throat> the king appointed the hand, the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have the charge of the gate and the people trolled upon him in the gate and he died. As the man of God said, who spake when the king came down to him? And it came to pass as the man of God had spoken to king saying two measures of barley for a shekel and a measure of fine flour for a shekel shall be t tomorrow, but about this time in the gate of Samaria. Mm -hmm. And that the Lord answered the, the man of God said, now behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, might such a thing be? And he said, behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. Mm -hmm. And so it fell out unto him for the people trolled upon him in the gate and he died. Mm -hmm. Then spake Elisha unto the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise, and go thou in thine household and sojourn, wheresoever thou canst sojourn. For the Lord hath called for a famine, and it shall also come up upon the land seven years. And the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God. So she went, and she went with her household and so, sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to pass at the seven years in that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines and she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. Okay. He, let's, uh, let's jump. Cause we, we read this too. Let's go to, um, chapter eight. Okay. Just eight. We're in eight right now. We already in eight. Yeah. This is eight right here. That was the beginning of eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go to, uh, nine. Uh, actually, I think we stopped it. Go to 816. 816? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because if y'all remember, we rewinded when we got to 8. We rewinded, went all the way back. So go to 816. I think that's where we left off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm 
if y'all remember, that was the woman who, uh, you know what I'm saying, who lost her house and tried to come back to the king and get it back, and Alicia had to help her out. So we doing uh, nine? No, we're no, gonna, we're gonna, gonna do, do eight, uh, eight, eight, sixteen. Verse sixteen yeah. Okay. It's Second Kings chapter eight, verse sixteen. Eight. Try to cover a little ground a day. In the fifth year of Jerem, the son of Ahab, king of Israel. All right, so now we we on the fifth year of Joram, son of Ahab. All right, so let me go to it here. You can get the little laser pointer out. All right, so now we have Joram, right? Son of Ahab. All right, so when they say Ahab, that's here. Let's see what it say. <clears throat> Jehoshaphat being the king of Judah, mm -hmm. uh, Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, mm -hmm. began to reign. Mm -hmm. Thirty and two years old was he when he began to reign. Mm -hmm. and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, as did the house of Ahab. Mm -hmm. For the daughter of Ahab was his wife, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yet the Lord would not destroy Judah for David's, David his servant's sake, as he promised him to give him a, always, always, a way, um, a light, and to his children. In his days of Edom, revolted from under the hand of Judah and made a king over themselves. So Joram went over to Zer and all the chariots with him, and he rose by night and smote the Edomites, which co compassed him about. And the captains of the chariots, chariots, and the people fled into their their tents. Mm -hmm. Yet Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah until this day. The Libna revolted at the same time, and the rest of the acts of the of Joram. And all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? Mm -hmm. and, and Joram slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. Mm -hmm. And Azahiah, his son, reigned in his stead. In the twelfth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, did Azahiah, the son of Joram, Jehoram, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and two years old was Azahiah when he began to reign. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And his mother's name was Athaliah. Yeah, I remember we talked about Athaliah. We yeah. talked about uh, Ahaziah. All right, so we kind of give him back. We're going to refresh a little bit so we can, you know what I'm saying, we can kind of get back in their story because we have to jump around a little bit so we can learn more about Elisha so we can see how Elisha plays into all this. Let's keep going. And his mother's name was Athaliah, the daughter of Amri, king of Israel. So now if you remember Athaliah, let me bring up the other screen here, make it a little bit more clear. Right. So if we look at Athaliah and where she fall at. Right. So you remember there was Amri. And you remember Amri set it all up. Right. He set up the, the town of Samaria. And that's where all the Israelite kings after Amri, that's where all the Israelite kings were. Then. You go down and it was Ahab. So you remember Ahab had the wife Jezebel. Remember Jezebel used to run the house, right? She would have people killed. She killed all of the Most High God's prophets. She was a killer, right? Jezebel was a mean lady. So then they had children, Joram, and they also had Ahaziah. So you start to notice, remember Jehoshaphat and Ahab were good friends, right? So the king of uh, Judah and Ahab were the good friends. So you start to notice that they start naming their kids similarly. He names his kids Jehoram. Ahab names his kid Joram. Jehoram names his kid Ahaziah. Ahab, you know what I'm saying, uh, named his kid Ahaziah. So all the names start to become similar and it get a little confusing here. Okay, well, Ahaziah married Athaliah. Athaliah was a daughter of Ahab, right? So now that's his wife. Uh, the, the king of Judah has a wife who is the daughter of Israel. Israel is a mess, right? Worshiping all other gods. They ain't got no rules, no standards. They do the most, right? Judah 
is a mess, but not quite that bad. Well, now they starting to mix. Mm. So now you remember Jezebel ran the house, yeah. right? She was pretty much the queen making all the decisions, killing all the prophets. Her daughter now is the queen of Israel, right? That's Jehoram's uh, 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 wife. So remember, we about to read it again, but remember, you know what I'm saying? Jehoram's son was, uh, uh, Jehoram had multiple sons and they killed Jehoram. We about to read about oh, how he died. Right. Yeah. And then she ends up killing all of his brothers so that she could be the person who make the decisions. So watch how this is about to play out. We're going to read it again just in case y'all forgot. And he walked in the way of the, the house of Ahab and did evil in the sight of the Lord as did the house of Ahab. Mm -hmm. For he was the son, the son-in-law of the house of Ahab. Mm -hmm. And he went with Joram, the son of Ahab, to war against Haziel, king of Syria, in Ramoth Gilead, Gilead. And the Syrians wounded uh, Joram. I might have said queen... Brother T told me, I said, I meant queen of Judah. So if I, if I said queen of Israel, I meant queen of Judah. And, and the king Joram went back to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given him at Ramah when he fought against Haziel, king of Syria. And, Haz, and uh, Azahiah, I mean, Ahiza, how do you pronounce that? Ahiza? Ahaziah. Ahaziah, thank you. Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Joram, the son of Ahab, in Jezreel, because he was sick. Mm -hmm. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Gird up thy loins and take this box of oil in thy hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. Mm -hmm. And when thou comest thither, look unto there Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, mm -hmm. the son of Nimshi, and go in and make him arise up from among his brethren. Carry him to an inner chamber, then take the box of oil and pour it out on his head and say, Thus said the Lord, I have anointed thee king of Israel. Then open the door and flee and tarry not. Mm -hmm. So the young man, even the young man, the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead. And when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting. And he said, I have Aaron to thee, O captain. Uh-oh. It's about to get real now. We are. It's, it's about to get real. Watch it. Oh, Jehu said, and I mean, I mean <clears throat> and Jehu said, unto which of all, which of all of us? And he said, to thee, O captain. All right. So he came. You know what I'm saying? Man of God told him, like, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead, go, go find Jehu. You know what I'm saying? When you find Jehu, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and anoint him. Tell him you about to be, you know what I'm saying? You about to be the one. Right? So he came over to him. He was like, yeah, I got some business with you. Jehu was like, uh, who? Which one? Right? He's like, you. <laughs> you, Jehu. Watch this. And he rose and went into the house, and he poured the oil on his head mm -hmm. and said unto him, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed thee king over the people of the Lord, mm -hmm. even over Israel. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt smite thy house of Ahab, thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of thy, and all the servants of the Lord, mm -hmm. and the hand of Jezebel. Mm -hmm. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from him, from Ahab, him that pitted against the wall, and him that shut up up, shut up up and left in Israel. All right. So you remember that was the prophecy that was sent to yeah. Ahab. Now Ahab is dead now. Yeah. Right? So now we're dealing with Ahab's son, Joram. But the prophecy was Jehu, right? A long time. So let's go all the way back. A long time ago, right? We was told that Jehu was gonna come. And he gonna knock all this stuff over. Right? So now. Jehu was coming, and he's about to kill some folks. Jehu was about, you know about to kill some folks. I'm just going to let y'all know what's about to happen, right? So this is the introduction to Jehu. Watch what happened. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah. Yep, so if y'all remember them, remember Jeroboam? He the one when he stuck his arm out and it shriveled up, Right? He was told that all his family would die. So uh, Jeroboam died, and then Nadab came. And then when Nadab came, Nadab got killed, and all the Jeroboam's uh, children got killed. Then it got handed over to Baasha. And then Baasha, same thing, he messed up. 
Same prophecy went to him. All your family going to die. So then Baasha died and then Elah came. And after that, all Elah died and all of Baasha's sons and the siblings died. All right. Then it went to Zimri, then it went to Amri, then it went to uh, Ahab. And then Ahab got the same prophecy. You, all your people going to die. Then Ahab died. Then after that, Joram is there. So what do you think about the happen, Joram? If you, if you pay it, if we know our history, when that happened, you should know, oh, your daddy died? Oh, everybody about to die now. That's because that's how most I got to do it. The one who gets the prophecy, he lets you go ahead and die in a regular way. You know what I'm saying? However, however it was going to naturally happen. But your kids going to deal with it. Right? So now Ahab dead. Remember, Ahab got killed in the, uh, in the war. Yeah. He did die. All his, all his family didn't die. He didn't have to see all his family dying. Oh, everybody else going to see it. His wife's still alive. Everybody's still alive. Except for Ahab. Oh, all that's about to get dealt with now. Watch this. And the dog shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel. Mm -hmm. And there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. Mm -hmm. Then Jehu came forth to the servants of the Lord. And one said unto him, Is all well? Mm -hmm. Wherefore came this mad, this mad fellow to thee? Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Ye know the man and his communication. And they said, It, it is false. Tell us now. And he said, Thus and thus spake, him, spake he to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king of Israel. Mm -hmm. Then they hasted and took every man his garment and put it under him on the top of, his, on the, top of the stairs. Right? So he told the people, like, Look, man. I'm telling you, this is what this man said. He came up to me. He said this, that, and the other, this, that, and the other. But long story short, he made me the king of Israel. The people rock with him. They're like, for real? Well, in that case, they start, you know what I'm saying, setting him up, making him look like he king the best they can. Watch this. Keep going. And and blew with the trump, with, blew with Trump is saying, Jehu is king. Mm -hmm. So Jehu, the son of Jeho Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, conspired against Joram. Mm-hmm. Now, Joram had kept Ramoth Gilead, he and all of Israel, because Haziel, king of Syria. But king, of the, but king Joram was returned to be healed in, Jezre in Jezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given him when he fought with Haziel, king of Syria. Mm -hmm. And Jehu said, if it be your mind, then let none go forth, nor escape out of the city to go tell it in um, Jezreel. Mm -hmm. So Jehu rode in a chariot and went to Jezreel. For Joram lay there, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, was come down to see Joram. And there stood a watchman on the tower of Jezreel, and he spied, there, spied the company of Jehu as he came, mm -hmm. and said, I see a company. And Joram said, Take a horseman and send to meet them, and let him say, Is it peace? All right. Say, so keeping a watch out. They got their watch me looking like, Man, I see you. It's a gang of boys running this way. <laughs> Throw him like, go ahead and send somebody there. Dre ain't too worried. He's yeah. like, man, go ahead and send somebody down there and just let him know. Is it peace? Like, what are you trying, what are you trying to do? You know what I'm saying? Throw him looking like, but you come down, it better be peaceful. Go ahead and go see about that boy. You know what I'm saying? So then well, let's see what happens. So there went one on the horseback to meet him and said, thus said the king, is it peace? Mm -hmm. And Jehu said, what has thou to do with peace? Look, look, <laughs> Jehu, look, Jehu riding. You know what I'm saying? He riding, whoever seen Tombstone. Y'all too, yo, yo, there's a movie called Tombstone. Them boys ride on their horses. They got their guns and stuff, cowboys. You know what I'm saying? Got their guns and stuff, this, that, and other. And they got them in slow motion kind of, and they ride now. You knew it was on. That's how I like to picture G. G who riding, you know what I'm saying? He coming down. You know what I'm saying? They send the man down. Is it peace? G looking like, what you got to do with peace? Right? Is that is that really the in other words, is that really the question you want to ask me, or do you want to just fold up and fall in and act like you on my side? <laughs> right? Because if you yeah. ask me that question, yeah. then that means you against me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he 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 gave him a chance. What do you have to do with Pete? In other words, ask another question. Right? Watch this. Mm -hmm. Watch what you say to him. Turn thee behind turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, The messenger came to them, but he cometh not again. Right? So the messenger went. He asked him, look, the king said, is it peace? He's like, man, what do you have to do with peace? Why don't you go ahead and get behind me? In other words, jump on my side. Yeah. Messenger was like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't messing with you boys. You know what I'm saying? I'm right behind you. So he jumped on this side. Then the watchman looking, you know what I'm saying? He's like, you know what I'm saying? He ain't got binoculars, but let's just imagine he got binoculars. He's looking, he looking like, uh, messenger ain't coming back. <laughs> Watch the drawer I'm deal with. 
And the watchman told saying, he came even unto them and coming not again. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshi. He look at because he's getting closer. And now, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? He can kind of see him. He probably squinting. He looking like, yeah. Oh, I'm going to tell you the truth. That look like Jehu. You know what I'm saying? Which one? Not the son of Nimshi. The son of Nimshi, Jehu? Well, I see what Joram huh? Let's see how he deal with it. Before he driving ferociously. Mm -hmm. And Joram said, make ready. And his chair was made ready. All right, Jerome was like, oh, I know what this is about. Let's get these boys. You know what I'm saying? Everybody get up. Let's go, let's go. Hey, no, that's Jehu, son of Nipsey coming. You know that boy got them hands. Let's get this boy. Let's go. We ain't got time to be sitting there playing. Let's go. So everybody going, they getting together, they getting their stuff together. Watch what happened. And Joram, king of Israel, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, went out, mm -hmm. each in his chariot, and they went out against Jehu and met him in a portion of Nabal. Right? So his best friend, Ahaziah, is there. Right? That's his brother-in-law. You know what I'm saying? So his brother-in-law there. Mm -hmm. And you got Joram. Right? Hey, like, yo, let's get it together. Get everybody. Let's, man, let's go. Let's get these boys. So they start riding. Let's see. And then met him in a portion of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Right? Y'all remember uh, Na uh, uh, Naboth? That's the one that Ahab had killed. So Ahab, Ahab went to him, tried to get his field. Naboth told him no. He went to Je he went to his wife Jezebel. Oh, yeah, right. She he was him. like, yeah. he was like, you know what I'm saying? I'm sad because you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Remember, he had just got the prophecy that he gonna die. Yeah. He a little depressed. He go try to get the field, make him feel better. That don't work out. Now he's super depressed. He go to his wife, tell him about it. She's looking like you do realize you the king. Just lay down, don't even worry. I'll take care of it. She go out. She had a man killed. Mm -hmm. Then she like the field is yours. Don't even worry about it. He's like, how you do that? I ain't gonna ask no questions. I appreciate the field. So then, most I got tell him over that situation. Oh, now you really gonna die, right? So this is that same field. This is where they meet him. It's poetic, ain't it? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like this is where they meet him, right? Let's see what happens. And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu. That he said, "Is it peace, Jehu?" Mm -hmm. And he answered, "What peace? So what peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel, Jezebel, and her witchcrafts are so many." And Joram turned his hands and fled, and said to Ahaziah, "There is treachery, O Ahaziah." Right. So he's looking at it. He came out there. He is like, "Yeah, what peace? What peace? You ask me about peace. What peace?" Your mama a witch, right? Your mama a witch, and she got all she she's a and she got whoredoms. In other words, she works with all these other gods. Yeah. She said, as long as that's the case, it ain't gonna be no excuse me, it ain't gonna be no peace. So after that, Joram was like, "Oh, that boy crazy! Yo, it's treachery!" You know what I'm saying? He, he took off running. He told Ahaziah, "Yo, no, 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 that's the op." I don't even know why I came down here. This boy edit. They saw in his eye, Jehu was serious. You know what I'm saying? They thought they were gonna come down there and be able to scare Jehu. Jehu was like, no, nah, that's not happening. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And Jehu drew a bow with his full strength and smote. That boy took the bow out, he running, and what he do? He smote Jehoram between his arms, and the arrow went out at his heart, and he sunk down in his chariot. Bow! Bow! Right through his back. Because remember, he run it. Yeah. So it came. Yeah. Yeah. And he sunk down into his chariot. Killed that boy. Right? What else happened? Then said Jehu to Bidkar, his captain, take it, take up and cast him in the portion of the field of Naboth the Jezreelite. For mm -hmm. remember how that when I and thou rode together after Ahab his father, the Lord laid his burden upon him. Mm -hmm. Surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth. And the blood of his son said the Lord, I will re requite, requite thee in his path, mm -hmm. in his plat, said the Lord. Now for take and cast him into the plat of ground, according to the word of the Lord. But when Ahaziah, the king of Judah, saw this, he fled by the way, the way of the garden house. And Jehu followed after him and said, smite him also in the chariot. <laughs> right. So then Ahaziah, you got you to gotta peep the scene. They come down there. They, they, get, they with their people, too. They come down like, hey, yo, is it peace? You know what I'm saying? The Jehu stopped like, man, what you talking about peace? Your mama a witch. She didn't kill all these people. She worshiping all these other gods. 
It can't be no peace long as she out here. After that, that boy Jordan, he might have been going running to try to save his mom. Like, oh, it's set up. They probably got my mama hidden somewhere. So he run. He looking like, oh, no. Then he yelling to Ahaziah, it's treachery. In other words, it's a trap. Don't do it. Move. Get out of Dodge. Run. He running. Jehu, pull out. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? You got to think of it like a pistol. He pull out. Bow! You know what I'm saying? But it's, a, it's an arrow, though. He pull out. Hit, kick. Hit him right there. He kick him. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Kill that boy. You know what I'm saying? That boy sitting there slumped down in this chariot like that. After ASI, ASI, he react late. You know what I'm saying? Joram already started running. ASI might already, he might be with the strap still. Then he see he, he get shot through. After that, ASI like, oh no, he take off running. He get in this chariot, he go. He shoot, you know what I'm saying? So, so you got you got a picture. G he he pulling, he pulling back down after killing uh Joram. He look over. He said, hey, Isaiah running. He look like, no, 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 get after him too. He go and start chasing him. He like, no, 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 put your hands on that boy. Right? Watch what happened. And he did so at at the going up of Gur, mm -hmm. which is by, um, I think, is it Ib Ibleem or Ibleem? I sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I think, it's, I think it is I Ibleem or something like that. Yeah, do the best you can. I don't know. I can't. Off, off the top of my head, I can't. Uh, let me see it. Uh, oh, yeah, that's uh, right there. Yeah, I believe. Which is by I believe. And he fled to uh, Meg Megiddo and died there. Megiddo? Megiddo. Okay. Yeah, so Megiddo. We're going we gonna to touch on Megiddo. You know what I'm saying? We're going to touch on. You ever heard Armageddon? Yeah. Right? So Armageddon comes from that word oh. or that, that place. Yeah. Megiddo. It's the, it's the battle of Megiddo. Right, that's really what it is. That's what Armageddon is. Right, it's the bat, it's the, the battle of uh, the place Megiddo. So we are gonna come back to that whenever you see Megiddo, because we know Armageddon is coming. Right, whenever you see Megiddo, you gotta pay attention to what happens in Megiddo. It's a place of judgment. It's gonna be a place of fire. That's what it's all about. Watch, keep going. And die there. And his servants carry him in the chariot to the to uh, Jerusalem, and buried him in his sepulcher, which his fathers in the city of David. Right? So then he killed that king. So then his servants came back around. He remember, he wasn't alone. So he came back around. They ain't trying to scrap. They came back around. They pick him up and they go bury him in Jerusalem. They take him back to Jerusalem and, and bury him. So now, that quick, Jehu killed both kings. He killed the king of Israel and the king of Judah. Right? Killed both of them. Let's see. Keep going. Watch this. And in the 11th year of Joram, the son of Ahab became Ahaziah to reign over Judah. And when, Je when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it and she painted her face. Right? So she painted her face. You know, you, uh, you know what I'm saying? Back in the day, the football players used to put the, you know what I'm saying? That's why I like the matter. She put that thing under her eye like that. She was like, oh, let's go. Because she with it. She looking like, let's go. Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? She ready to go to war. Watch this. And tired her head and looked out the window. Mm -hmm. And as Jael entered in, in at the gate, she said, had Zimri peace? Mm -hmm. Who slew, this, slew his master? Right? So she asked the question. She was looking like, I see what you're doing now, boy. You know what I'm saying? Because she know the history. You got Look, yeah. she was she the bad lady. She know the history. So let me put it back on the screen. Look, we know that it started with Jeroboam. Jeroboam acted up. Most like God told him, your whole family going to die. Jeroboam died by himself. His whole family didn't die. Then Nadab came. Nadab, whole family, all the siblings, everybody got killed. After that, it got passed to Baasha. Same thing happened with Baasha. He messed up. Most like God said, your whole family going to die. His whole family didn't die. When he died, he died by himself. Then Eli came, and then everybody got killed. Or everybody in Baasha family got killed, right? So then Zimri was the one who did it, right? Baasha killed Nadab. But Zimri killed Eli and all his family. So after that, Amri ended up killing Zimri. Well, uh, no, actually, Zimri, I think Zimri got into it with uh, the other guy that was trying to, trying to take it over. And then Amri got involved. Zimri lived a short life. So let's go to the other slide. Watch this. So you look at Zimri. So you see Elah short. Then you got Zimri and then Tibnai. They both got into it. Timnai took over, and then Amri took it over from there. So what the point that she's making, Jezebel, 
when Jezebel's talking to um, talking to Jehu, the point she's making is she's saying, listen, we've been here before. Right. We've been in this situation before. Yeah. You think you going to have peace? So you killed my husband. Uh, you, uh, you killed my, my son. Right. And you killed my son in law. Right. Cool. You got it. But you think you about to have peace? Don't you know that the last times that this happened, them boys got toppled over too quick. So she's trying to make a case to him like, you think you're doing something. Boy, you about to die too. She ain't scared to die. She looking like, you know what I'm saying? She already, you know what I'm saying? You kind of, back in the day, like when girls will fight, they try to keep their face pretty. Right? So what they do is, you know what I'm saying? Back like in my mama day, they'd take Vaseline, right? And they'd put it right here and they'd put it right here. The reason is because your bones are right here, right? So when you fight, when you get into a fist fight, what happens is you be punching. And since the bones is up against your skin right here, you'll, you'll hit it and it'll break your skin because you'll punch, your skin will get swollen. And as you punch more, the skin gets so tight that you punch it and it splits. So you'll have cuts by your eyes just from your, your, your bones hitting up against your skin and they have so much pressure, it cuts and splits it. You know what I'm saying? So if even back in the day, it don't really happen much anymore, but even back in the day, boxers, you'll see that they boxing and they got on gloves with padding in them, you'll yeah. see they got cuts all in their they skin because it's because their skin just split from being swollen so much, so much blood rushing right there and they split because their bone is right there and there's blood under it. So what girls would do is they would put a bunch of Vaseline on their face right here, right? So that was like a thing. That it's time to fight, a girl would, uh, she would tie up her hair, right? Tie her hair up. She would put Vaseline right here, right here. Yeah, she be. That's how girls used to fight. It's corny. Girls is corny. But look, they what? go like that, no, and they get out there. Yeah, male is definitely my favorite. So, what you? What's your point? You said girls are corny. That was your favorite. <laughs> well, she's different. You corny for saying that. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> so listen. So you uh, you know what I'm saying. So that's what she doing. Books say. She painted her face. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then tied up her hair. Yeah. So she ready. She's sitting there like, no, let's do it then. She ain't scared. She ready. And then when he came up, oh, you think you want to have peace? All right. So she with it. Watch what happened, though. <clears throat> and looked down. So after she tied her hair and looked out out a window. And, and as Jehu entered into the gate, she said, has them by peace who slew his master? Mm -hmm. And he lift up his face to the window and said, who is on my side? Who? All right? So he looked up because she high up. He looked up. He looked like, who on my side? Anybody in there? Who on my side? <laughs> Watch this. And there looked out the wind, looked out to him two or three eunuchs. Mm -hmm. And he said, throw her down. So they threw her down. And some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses. And, and he chode her under, underfoot. All right? So she, she, they threw her down. They push her out, out, out the window, threw her down. She splattered, hit the wall, and you know what I'm saying? They kind of the, the horses kind of stomped all over. Her, right? So that's that's her demise. So now Jehu got three bodies on him quick. You know what I'm saying? These big bodies, too. Quick. That boy ain't waste no time. He came right to it. Soon the most I got, yo, we're gonna anoint you keep me. Yeah, you're gonna be king. Look, man, I'm telling you. Man walked in, anointed me king. You gonna be king? All right, here, let's stress you up. All right, let's get right to it then. Because you know what that means. Yep. If I'm king, that means I got to kill a king. Yeah. You got right to the business. Oh, you standing next to him? Hey, is I standing right to him? You can get it too. Bow, you got him. And let me go get Jezebel because I know you messed our people up. And you see, you see how quick the people traded on him? Yeah. Man came, the messenger came. Is it peace? Man, what you got to do with peace? You better get behind me right away. Ain't no put up, no fight, no argument. So that's how you know that Joram wasn't respected. Yeah. Ahab wasn't respected. Yeah. Jezebel wasn't respected. Right? They were just waiting for, you know, somebody who would stand up to him. Let's keep going. And when he was come in, he did eat and drink and said, go see now this cursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. Watch this. Yeah, so he tried to have respect for her, right? He was looking like, well, that's, that is a king's daughter now. 
Go ahead and bury her. Now. You know what I'm saying? Don't be acting like she just a race. You know what I'm saying? You still got to respect the office. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, go ahead and bury her now. Watch this though. And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of, of her, hand, her hand. All they could find was her skull, her feet, and the palms of her hand. Everything is just scattered all over the place. Just like the most high God said. Watch this. Yeah. Wherefore they came again and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. which he, he said, This is he said, This is the word of Yahuwah. Watch yeah. this. And he spake by her his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel. Mm -hmm. And the carcasses of Jezebel shall be a dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, This is Jezebel. Right? He said it's gonna mm -hmm. be to the point where they can't make her out. Right? Nobody gonna be able to look at what's remaining of her and be like, oh, that was Jezebel. They just gonna be like, that's somebody's hand. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's skull. You know what I'm saying? But they don't know who it was. Keep going. Watch this. And Ahab, the 70 sons, uh, and Ahab had 70 sons in Samaria. And Jehu wrote letters and sent to Samaria unto the rulers of Jezreel, to the elders and to them that brought up Ahab's children, saying, now, as soon as this letter cometh to you, seeing your master's sons are with you, and there are with you chariots and horses, a fenced city also, and armor, look even out the best and meetest of your master's sons, and set him on his father's throne, and fight for your master's house. Mm -hmm. But they were exceedingly afraid, and said, Behold, two kings stood not before him. Now then shall we stand? And he that was over the house and he that was over the city, he, the elders also, and the bringers up of the children sent to Jehu saying, we are thy servants, thy servants, and will do all that thou shalt bid us. We will not make any king, do thou, do thou that which is good in thine eyes. Right, so Jehu tried to set him up. Yeah. He <laughs> said, listen, I know, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> Jehu got some kids. I mean, Ahab, was it Ahab? Uh, yeah, Ahab. Mm -hmm. Ahab got got other kids, right? So uh, Joram, right? Joram was one of his kids, and Ahaziah was one of his kids, right? So it's like, I know he got other sons. So go ahead. I sent letters to all y'all. You is yeah, That's y'all master. Go ahead, set them up. Get them all dressed. Get them ready. And then be prepared to fight for your king, right? Be prepared to fight. So he put them in the position. Them boys looking like, Listen, in one day, he killed both of the kings of Israel, right? And then after that, killed their mama. They look like, nah, nah, we, we not doing that. He's like, we not doing that. We, we your servants. You know what I'm saying? We mess with you. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you think is right, that's what we going to go with. So let's see what happened with you. Then he wrote a letter the second time to them saying, if ye be mine, and if ye will hearken unto my voice, take ye the heads of the men, your master's sons, and come to me to Jezreel by tomorrow this time. Mm -hmm. Now the king's son, being 70 persons, were with the great men of the city, mm -hmm. which brought them up. And it came to pass when the letter came to them that they took the king's sons and slew 70 persons and put their heads, on, heads in baskets and sent him them to Jezreel. And there came a messenger and told him, saying, They have brought the heads of the king's sons. And he said, Lay ye them in two heaps at the entering in the gate until the morning. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the morning that he went out and stood and said to all the people, Ye be righteous. Behold, I conspired against my master and slew him. But who slew all these? Uh, so you know now that th there shall fall unto the earth, nothing of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spake concerning the house of Ahab. Mm -hmm. For the Lord hath done that which he spake by his servant Elijah. So Jehu slew all that remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, and all, the, all his great men, and his kinsfolks, and his priests, and until he left him none remaining. And he arose and departed, and came to Samaria. And as he was, was at the shearing house in the way, Mm -hmm. Jehu met with the brethren of <coughs> Ahaziah, king of Judah, and said, Who are ye? And they answered, We are the brethren of Ahaziah. Mm -hmm. And we go down to salute the children of, king, of the king and the children of the queen. Mm -hmm. And he said, Take them alive. 
and they took them alive and slew them at the pit of the shearing house, even two and 40 men, neither left any of them. Right. So now he killed all of Ahab's sons. Right. So Ahab had one son named Ahaziah, who's already dead. Right. Now this is Ahaziah's brothers. So Ahaziah's brothers just got because they would have been next to kin. So now they just got killed. Right. Keep going. Watch this. And when he was departed, then he lightened on uh, Jehonadab, 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 the son of Rechab, mm -hmm. come to meet him. And he saluted him, said to him, is thine heart right as my heart is with thy heart? Mm -hmm. And Jehonadab answered it, it is. If it be, give me thy hand. And he gave him his hand and he took him up to him into the chariot. Right. So he pulled him into the yeah. chariot. Watch this. And he said, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. Right. So now he's showing Jehu is looking at Jehonadab. He's looking like you. You with me? I'm like, yeah, no, we good. All right. Watch this. Pulled him up into it. He is like, now come with me and see how much I love God. You know what I'm saying? See how hard. See how on fire I am for God. Watch this. So they so they made him ride in his chariot. Mm -hmm. And when he came to Samaria, he slew all the remaining remain unto Ahab in Samaria till he had destroyed him according to the saying of the Lord, which he spoke to Elijah. So he made Jehonadab watch as he killed everybody that he could find that is related to Ahab. Just killing them, boy. Killing them, killing them, killing them. You would cut gone. You would dissing cut. Yeah. You was auntie. Yeah. Everybody just got to get it, right? Keep going. Watch this. And Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them, Ahab served serve Baal a little, but Jehu shall serve him much. Right? So you remember, Baal is one of the other gods. That's the god that got set up, you know what I'm saying, that, 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 that crept in after Jeroboam, because Jeroboam didn't have no standards. So then Baal started to creep in later. Amri, along with um, uh, 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 Ahab and Jezebel, made Baal very popular in the land. So now he's looking like, yo, Ahab served Baal a lot. I mean, a little. I'm going to serve him a lot. That's what he's telling the people, right? Y'all serve, they all like this other God? Oh, oh y'all ain't about to see no, this other God get served like anybody else. But it's a trap, mm -hmm. right? So look what he do. Now for calling to me all, that, all the prophets of Baal, mm -hmm. all his servants, and all his priests, mm -hmm. let none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Right? He said, anybody who served Baal, all the prophets, all the priests, everybody, he said, let none be wanting. In other words, don't let nobody miss it. Everybody need to be here because I'm about to do the biggest sacrifice to Baal that y'all have ever seen in your life. So you can imagine people looking like, oh, this a party. That's how you got to look at it like, yeah. oh, this a party. We got to be there. We got to be there. This is the biggest event of the year. Look at this. You see what G you about to do? I thought he didn't even like Ahab. He about to take it way further than Ahab. Watch what he do. It's a trap, though. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not, not live. Mm -hmm. But Jehu did it in sub, uh, subtility, subtility mm -hmm. to the intent that he might destroy the worship, worshipers of Baal. Mm -hmm. And Jehu said, proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. Mm -hmm. And they proclaimed it. And Jehu sent through all Israel and all the worship of Baal came so that there was none, not a man left that came, came not. Mm -hmm. And they came into the house of Baal and the house of Baal was full from one end to another. Mm hmm. And he said unto him that was over the vestry, bring forth the vestments for all the worshipers of Baal. Mm -hmm. And he brought them forth vestments. And Jehu went and Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, into the house of Baal and said unto the worship, worship of, of uh, Baal, search and look that there be here with ye none of the servants of the Lord. All right. So then he told him, he was like, all right, y'all all here. I don't want no servants of Yahuwah here. Everybody who's a servant of Yahuwah, I want to make sure they out there. Everybody look around and make sure we don't have no servants of Yahuwah. Making them feel like, oh, yeah, we don't make mess with them servants of Yahuwah. Right? But really, he just want to make sure he get all the right people caught. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to make sure no servants. I want to make sure there ain't no servants of Yahuwah inside of this trap now. You know what I'm saying? 
So make sure it ain't no servants of Yahuwah around y'all. Only, only worshipers of Baal. Watch this. And when they went to offer sacrifice and burnt offerings, Jehu appointed a four, four score men without and said, if so it's they, 80 guys on the outside, everybody on the inside is like 80 guys on the outside. Watch this. And said, if, if any man whom I have brought into your hand escape, he that letteth him go, his life shall be for the, for thy life. So he said he put 80 around the whole temple. It's full of people that worship Baal, worship this other guy. He said, listen, any one of them that get out, whoever let them get out, it's your blood. I'm going to kill you if you let some money these boys get out. Right? So now they got incentive like, oh, we can't let nobody escape. Right? Now watch. <clears throat> so, he, uh, so he said, let him go. His life shall be for the life of him. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering that Jehu said to the, the guard, to the captains, go in and slay them. Let none come forth, and they smote them with the edge of the sword. Mm -hmm. And the guard and the captains cast them out and went to the city of the house of Baal. Mm -hmm. And they brought forth the images out of the house of Baal and burnt them. Mm -hmm. And they break down the image of Baal and break down the house of Baal and made it a drought house until this day. Mm -hmm. Thus Jehu destroyed, destroyed Baal out of Israel. Howbeit from the sins of Jeroboam, the son, the son of Nebat, who mm -hmm. made Israel to sin, Jehu departed not from after them to with the golden cows that were in Bethel and that were in Dan. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Jehu, because thou hast done well in ex executing that which is right in mine eyes and has done unto the house of Ahab, according to all that was in mine heart. Mm -hmm. Thy children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord of Lord God of Israel mm -hmm. with all his heart. For he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. In those days, the Lord began to cut Israel short and Haziel smote them all in the coast of Israel mm -hmm. from Jordan eastward and all the land of Gilead, the Gadites, the Reubenites, the Manassites from from uh, is it Arior? I think it's Arior, Arior. But uh, some, something like that. Uh, All right. Which by the river of Ornon, even Gilead and Bashan. Mm -hmm. Now the rest of the acts of Jehu, and all that hit he did, all his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? Mm -hmm. And Jehu slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. And Jehoaz, uh, Jehoaz, 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 or Jehoaz. Yeah, Jehoaz. Jehoaz, okay. His son reigned in his stead. And, and at the time, Jehu reigned over Israel in Samaria was 20 and 8 years. All right. So Jehu, he, uh, he took the kingdom. He reigned for almost 30 years. He had a son, and we're going to learn about his son. But. Before we learn about his son, we're going to learn that we're going to we're going to jump back over to y'all remember um, uh, Ahaziah, who just died, who just got killed by Jehu. Ahaziah, his wife, Athaliah, was Jezebel's daughter. She's still alive at this point. Right. Jehu didn't kill her. She's still alive at this point. So the prophecy technically hasn't been fulfilled yet. Right. True. Well, let me let me take that back. The prophecy was everyone who pisses against a wall. Talking about a male. So that's talking about all the males, right? All yeah. the males got to get it. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, she's still alive, right? So we got to see what happens to her next week. I think we already read what happened to her, but just in case we didn't, we got to see what happened to her, and we're gonna see how this plays out. Right. How we deal with this. All right. Any questions? All right. Well, let's pray out.